Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, or COPD, affects over 16 million Americans. COPD causes lung damage that obstructs airflow, interferes with the lungs taking up oxygen and removing carbon dioxide, and produces symptoms such as productive cough, wheezing, and exercise limitations due to shortness of breath. In the U.S., tobacco smoke is the most common exposure that causes COPD. About 15% of all COPD cases can be attributed to workplace exposures, such as dust, gases, and chemical fumes. This video will discuss the danger of combined smoking and workplace exposures and provide advice from an expert in pulmonology on how to minimize the risk from workplace exposures. When I was young and working there, I didn't, I didn't think about it. I didn't, I didn't know what effect it was going to have in later years, but uh, evidently it did. But uh, if I'd have known better, I would have uh, done something about it, maybe get them to get more safety, safety stuff there. But uh, in other words, uh, to me, it was uh, just a job. It was, uh, that's, that was a, that was, was a job. I think it's a responsibility of employers to educate employees that exposure to certain products at the workplace can cause COPD. Not everybody will get COPD. A minority of the workers will get COPD. Just like not every smoker develops COPD, only a minority develops COPD. But if employees do get it, then you know they need to be supported, they need to be diagnosed accurately, and they need to be treated correctly. And if compensation benefits are available and medical benefits can be provided, they should be provided. The Veterans Administration takes pretty good care of us. If I was not a veteran, I would find it very, very difficult because all this medicine and stuff that I have to, to take, it would, uh, it would break a person. It would flat break a person. If a patient's been diagnosed to have work-related COPD, I think it's important to limit any exposures that can hurt their lungs. One such exposure may in fact be cigarette smoking because we know that patients who have both cigarette smoking and work-related exposures will benefit if they quit smoking as well. In addition to smoking cessation, it's very important to limit exposures to irritant dusts, fumes and vapors of the workplace. They may be able to negotiate with their employer if they could be transferred to a job that's less dusty, for instance. They may be able to put some engineering measures in place, such as exhaust ventilation. If nothing works, personal protective devices may be helpful, such as respirators. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of what's going on around you. Hopefully, you'd be able to identify or understand that these areas that you do go into or around, you might be exposed to something. We didn't understand that probably. And that's not a good thing. It's just, it's kind of really made my life go from an active person to an inactive person. For providers, there are two examples of innovative solutions that may be relevant for work-related COPD. One such example comes from West Virginia where a tele-mentoring program is being used to train mid-level providers to perform pulmonary rehabilitation in remote rural communities. And the data is actually quite successful in the Appalachian region. Another example is a tele-mentoring clinic that has been established in New Mexico, where providers are encouraged to form teams of professionals to take care of minors and other workers who have occupational COPD. So I think both those programs have one thing in common, is the use of technology to reach out to rural providers who may not be aware of how to diagnose and manage work-related COPD. At this stage of my life, I could, I could wholeheartedly advise people 
if you're creating any kind of air havoc around you, protection is of the utmost safety feature. Your lugs, you only have a two, two lugs. They're only gonna last so long. If you use protection and the right kind of protection, your lugs will last a lot longer than mine, most likely. It's a little late for me, but it's not too late for you to start with that premise that your lungs and your ears, your senses are all valuable and you gotta protect them. I think there's increasing recognition by the American employers and by the American workers that this disease is preventable. And every effort needs to be made to make this disease less common in the United States. And if it does occur, to diagnose it early and to treat it early. And changes need to be made not only at the workplace, but also in worker lifestyles. Educate them about the damaging effect of combining cigarette smoke with work place dust exposures as an example. Keeping a worker healthy at the workplace by making sure exercise, adequate nutrition is given to them is all very helpful. I think investing in a worker uh, is very important for any business. And don't be so hard-headed and if you do work in mines, because I know there's still mines, whether it be copper or whatever, wear your safety equipment. Take care of yourselves. I'm losing out on a bunch. Can't even chase my wife down the driveway anymore. <laughs> there is increasing worker awareness, far better prevention strategies, improving diagnostic strategies, and better treatment options that are becoming available. I see a far better future in the management of work-related COPD.